The brand new Razer Blade 14 promises to be one of the smallest and most powerful laptops on the market. This thing packs a processor that wouldn't be out of place on either a much bigger gaming laptop or heck, it's got power that is right up there with desktop type processors. So I guess the really big question is, how has this held up over the past week? Let's find out. Boom, that sounded pretty good. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Without further ado, let's get into the business of Laptop Weekly Updating. First quick note, I would like to thank Razer for letting me borrow this Blade 14. They are not paying me for the video, nor do they control what I'm going to say here today. I'm borrowing this laptop and then I'm going to send it back to them in just a couple of weeks. This is a transitional addition to the studio here. So let's quickly cover all of the ordering options and spec choices if this is your first time seeing content on the Razer Blade 14. Cough, cough, like someone's Razer Blade 14 versus MacBook Pro 13 video that you did just unrelatedly. You should probably watch that after you finish watching this one. I'm just saying, there might be a link somewhere where you can do just that. The Razer Blade 14 in all of its models is an update that moves Razer into having a mainline offering with the new AMD Ryzen chipset. This particular model has the Ryzen 5900HX, which is an 8-core, 16-thread processor with a base clock speed of 3.3 GHz. At its base model, it comes equipped with 16 GB of RAM, a 1TB solid-state drive, and an NVIDIA RTX 3060 graphics card. This 1080p displayed base model will run you $1799. You can take that and go up to an NVIDIA RTX 3080 QHD displayed model, and ouch, yes, it's a tad more pricely, at an additional $1,000, rounding out that price tag to $2,799, or roughly the same cost as two of my mortgage payments. Tech, uh... Tech can be expensive, team. I personally requested and have been using the base model 3060 variant, so keep that in mind as we talk about what I've liked and what I've disliked over the past week. I prefer this because I like talking about base models here. Everybody likes to talk about the high-end stuff, but when I go to buy something, I want to see how far they've pushed the lowest-end models, so that's what I requested for you all. And that segues really nicely into those things that I've enjoyed and disenjoyed. Probably need to invest in a thesaurus. First off, let's start with the dislikes, because, well, I don't know. I don't know why, but I'll tell you what. I'm feeling kind of grumpy today after I've been stuck in meetings for eight hours straight. But it's not that grumpy, I guess, because there isn't that much to dislike here. The first thing I've disliked is not something new to the Blade 14. If you've used any of the Razer laptops in recent memory, you'll know that they are absolutely gorgeous. I love the design choice. I love the matte finish. It just looks great until you touch it. The second you touch this laptop, it gets smudged, something gross. Just to get it in this spot for the shot here, I had to clean it when I got it on the table, and then after I opened it, I cleaned the corner of the screen I used to open it so you wouldn't have to see those smudges. Normally during a video, I'll try to pick up and move the gadget around so you can get a sense of how it is in the physical world, but I won't be touching this one because I don't really want to clean it a third time, fam. Okay, well, that's lazy, Gary, and you're not the lazy type, right? Here, check this out. It's just, it's awful. Look at this. You can see it, like, right there, right off the bat, you see the smudges. And yes, this is better than previous models, as we saw in the unboxing video. But while I was hopeful, I've come to realize that this is either a one or a zero phenomenon. Either it smudges or it doesn't. And even less smudges are still bad. It's weird that every other manufacturer has this figured out. But Razer keeps this going, and I don't understand why, and I gotta, hold on, this is the third time we gotta clean this, because I can't just leave this for the video today. Always have a microfiber cloth with you. That's a through line in all of my videos now. The next thing I don't like here is the limited upgradability. Yes, you can update the solid state drive and the Wi-Fi chip, but you only get one M.2 drive, and I don't know that I've ever upgraded a Wi-Fi chip. I know they had to limit certain things to get the laptop this size, but I think I'd prefer a computer a few more millimeters wide if it would allow me to put my own RAM and maybe a second solid-state drive in there. Certainly it's not a deal breaker, but this is a gaming laptop that no matter how much you spend, you will only be able to go to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that's very limiting in 2021. And the last thing that I don't really like is another thing that's not really Razer's fault. This is Ryzen's fault, and it's a Ryzen motherboard thing I don't like. You won't get Thunderbolt functionality out of the USB-C ports. 
If you don't use a lot of Thunderbolt accessories, you don't care about this at all. You're like, Gary, why are you even talking about I don't even use Thunderbolt. Well, part of the subjectivity of YouTube videos is that me, a person that exclusively uses Thunderbolt accessories for all of my video game slash work peripherals, this is a huge issue for me trying to fit a computer like this into my own personal workflow. But again, this is a minor issue because as we'll talk about here in a second, there are some pretty easy ways around this particular problem. And as far as major complaints go, that's all I've got. And I don't think any of them is a major deal breaker unless you have programs or applications that require more RAM and that's just something you're not going to be able to get around. So let's get on to the things that I've liked. First off, and it's really hard to not start here, but I really like the power. This is a 14 inch gaming laptop and it basically has the same power as my much bigger, much beefier, and much harder to take around with me G17 gaming laptop. It's wild to think that this very portable laptop has roughly the equivalent amount of raw CPU power as my custom build 3090X PC build. It's, it's so wild. Now, I'm not one much for benchmarking computers. If you want to see that, there are hundreds of other YouTube videos out there that will go through each and every test that you could ever want. But quickly touching on some Cinebench, this computer is right up there with the best for multi-core performance. And for single core, it again is right up there with the top end 11th gen Intel processors. And that's like the only thing Intel has going for it right now for power, right? And this Demir laptop pretty much matches or exceeds it in every way. I'm more of a creator than a video gamer, but this works really well with running my WoW Classic Escapades, which at with as many days played as I've got going on, that's all that I can really ask, right? From that creator perspective, this handles pretty beefy video codecs very easily. And when processing and rendering those video projects, I've not seen a single slowdown, a single hiccup, or anything using my preferred Windows video editing software, DaVinci Resolve. And it runs the rendering of those files at double real time, which that's the good hurdle to cross. Like if I had a top end benchmark that I wanted a computer to get to, double real time rendering, that's really it. Yes, the bigger GPU options will probably do better for gaming and video editing, but the 3060 is not doing too shabby. Plus, as with all recent Razer laptops, you get access to their proprietary command center that lets you move around the power for the CPU and the GPU in certain little situations as you see fit, given your need at any particular moment. Leading into the next thing I like, the thermal performance. Yes, I'm using the smaller GPU option, so this could just be specifically here, but this laptop at any price comes with a serious vapor chamber cooling system. And it cannot be overstated how important the thermal performance on a laptop is. It's been a while since I've said it here, but if a laptop isn't properly managed thermally, you are literally throwing money away because you will not get the functionality out of the specs that you bought if the computer throttles it. I mean, that is such a big deal. And we really saw that with those older 15 inch MacBooks where you'd buy like that super powerful processor and not get that performance. Even under load here, I haven't seen any major issues and I think they've done an excellent job building out the cooling system here. Specifically that even the fan noise when doing stuff like video editing never gets terrible. The next thing that I've really liked is just the size. This is a 14 inch laptop and for my money, this size of laptop is just about right. I hate bringing along huge laptops if I'm going to be traveling. You know, that time when you need a laptop. 16 inch and above, they're just brutal in any sort of airplane or coffee shop. And as COVID restrictions really start to ease up, I think we'll start seeing more, you know, for lack of a better term, normal travel work situations occurring again. 14 really seems to be the point where companies can get real juggernaut levels of power without taking up all that much space. So for me personally, the Blade 14 is just awesome. Awesome that they were able to fit all of this stuff in here. And talking about the stuff in and on the laptop, the next thing I've liked is all of the IO. Look, I, look team, you know me, look at all of my videos in my back catalog. I'm normally an Apple user for like 95% of my projects. And the thing I hate is having less port options when I need to plug into an external monitor. And while yes, I'm disappointed that this doesn't have Thunderbolt functionality. It's got two USB-C, two USB-A, and an HDMI port. That's exactly what I need from a professional standpoint. Would I like to see an SD card slot? Sure. But SD cards are only something that I use for YouTube. In my actual project manager job, I just use a USB-C hard drive to transfer files. Like I literally never use SD cards except when I'm making these kind of videos. And this needs to be the standard going forward. All companies or laptop manufacturers watching this video. If you're watching, stop. I'll pause for a second, let you get some paper and pencil. 
We need two USB-C and two USB-A and a full HDMI port on all of your products going forward. Bonus points if those USB-C ports are Thunderbolt, though. The next thing I continue to like is the Razer keyboard. In fact, because of the shape and size of this laptop, I think this might be my favorite Razer keyboard to date. I'm a prolific typer, and by prolific typer, I mean I spend all day long responding to emails and typing into Teams chat, which sounds like a dream job that you should envy, right? You should envy this, right? But the keys feel pretty good. They have enough of a spring to them to be really easy to get into a typing groove without them being overly clicky. I get that some people love that click clackiness when playing video games or typing or having your mic unmuted when talking in a meeting, but for me, click clackiness just drives me nuts. And to round it out, let's quickly talk about the rest of the physical features. The trackpad is okay. It's all right, it's nothing to write home about. It's fine, it's not as good as Dell's XPS line, and it's certainly not as good as the MacBooks. The display is also perfectly functional, if it is a bit on the dimmer side. I do really like having a fast refresh rate panel if I'm going to be playing games in a computer, but that's really the only time I care about. If I'm not playing games, I, I mean, 60 hertz is perfectly fine if I'm gonna be video editing or doing anything other than like playing video games. This is overall a surprisingly well-built and very powerful machine that has a lot to like. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Would I recommend that you go out and buy the Razer Blade 14? Yes and no. Yes, I would recommend this if you are looking for the ultimate travel laptop. This is way better than the Razer Blade 13, and I do like this a little bit more than the Zephyrus G14, but that, that will get its own video next week. And for me, when I need Windows functionality, I consider this to be on par with my MacBook for usefulness. If you want a laptop that easily fits into a backpack and has almost the power of a desktop computer, this is the easiest recommendation I have for you right now. It is expensive. I cannot sugarcoat that. I can't cut any of that out. This is very expensive. Even the cheapest model will probably cost you two grand when you consider taxes, but you do get a lot of power and a lot of usability for that money. However, on the other, the darker, the not as happy side of the recommendation, I would not recommend this for you if you are looking for a do-it-all laptop for working from home and travel. And the main reason for that is the 16 gigabytes of RAM. This isn't unified memory designed to work on an ARM-based system like the MacBooks. This is traditional x86 territory. And I think you will have situations where 16 gigabytes just isn't gonna be enough. Be that video editing, coding, web design, graphic design, etc. That's the biggest disappointment here. I really, really wish there was an option for 32 gigabyte, even if they won't let us upgrade it ourselves. If the Razer Blade 14 has a deal breaker, it would be this. I mean, some people just need more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. But all in all, I think this is a very powerful, very well-built, very attractive little machine that I think will make a lot of people very happy. Four varies in 30 seconds. Beat that, internet. And if you like this video and you want to see how the Razer Blade 14 stacks up against that MacBook Pro 13, here's my video where I compare the two head-to-head. -head. You can find it by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.